In this lab exercise, we're going to take a look at adding grids, adding columns, creating floor slabs, creating railings, and modifying our camera properties. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is add a level to our architectural template that we're given by default. So let's first go to our south elevation view. I'm going to come up here on our architectural tab, come down to our datum panel, and we're going to click on our level tool. I'm going to come out here to the edge of my datum line for the levels. I'm going to come up 10 feet. I'm going to click, come out here till it snaps into place with our other levels. And here we are. Going to escape out. Right now, I want to make sure that we do continue to rename our levels. I'm going to change our level three. So now that I've deselected the level, I'm going to click here on level three and change it to roof. As I mentioned before, yes, we would like to rename our corresponding views so that everything associated with this level changes in our project browser. While we're here, I would also like to edit our floor elevation for each of our levels because we actually have a 12 foot floor to floor height in this sketch problem. So I'm going to click here on level two and I'm going to click again to change the level elevation. I'm going to click on 12 feet and do that one more time. And we're going to change this to 24 feet. Now we have a 12 foot floor to floor for our levels. So now let's go back to our floor plan level one. From our floor plan level one, the next thing we need to do is to create our grid. Our grid actually works similar to our levels, but we're actually going to lay out the grid lines in our floor plan. And you'll see our levels are actually grayed out right now. So I'm going to click on our grid tool right here in the datum panel next to the level tool and I'm going to click and drag to my second point and click again I'm going to hit modify to escape out of this command if I zoom in you'll see by default Revit will assign a number to each of these column grid callouts I'm going to click and because I want to start the numbering sequence alphabetically I'm going to change this to an A. At this point you'll see that any further grid lines that are created so we'll click here wherever we'll snap to and you'll see Revit gives this a letter V. So let's continue and lay out our C and D column grids as well. I'm just going to graphically lay these out. I can come back and modify these grid lines. And here we are with our four grid lines. Now we were looking for a 35 foot spacing between them. I'm going to click, change my temporary dimension. I'm going to click again here. I'm going to drag my letter D column line outside and change this to 35 feet as well. Now we have a 35 foot spacing between our column grid lines. I'm going to create my grid lines in the opposite direction as well. I'm going to start on this point, come out here, and I'm going to click here. In this direction, 
I would like the columns call outs to be numerical. So I'm going to click on this one as well and change this to be a number one. Letting Revit know that I would like to number my column grids in this direction. This time, because I know we're looking for a 25 foot spacing, I'm going to pay closer attention to our temporary dimension as we lay them out. I'm going to create one more as well. So here we are. Here's our 25 foot base. The next thing we're going to do is come up here and add columns to our grid layout. So up on our architectural tab, if you click on the drop down for our column tool, you'll see both access to the structural and the architectural column. First we're going to click on our structural column. Let's take a look at our properties menu. We're going to stick with the W10 by 49 Y flange column. But I want to make sure that you realize this moves with columns checkbox needs to be checked so that we can maximize the power that Rev gives us by allowing us to shift our columns with the grid lines. So as the column line shifts, all the columns associated with that grid line will shift as well. The other thing up here in our options bar, I want to make sure that we change this to height and that we specify a height for our columns as well. With this being a two-story building, I'm going to give our columns a height to roof. Next thing, I'm going to come up to our contextual ribbon and I'm going to click at grid points. With this selected, Revit will actually allow me to select the column grid lines that I would like to place my columns on. And if you see after that selection, if I zoom in, you're already seeing the column placed. Hit spacebar to rotate these columns. And hit the green check mark to finish. Now we have our columns all laid out. I'm going to hit modify to escape out of this command. Now let's repeat the process with our architectural column. So back up to our architectural tab, click the drop down, architectural. I want to use our 24 by 24 inch rectangular column. Grids moves with grids is checked. I'm going to change the height up to roof again. And I'm going to insert these one by one. You see as I hover over my grid line intersections, I'm placing my grids. Then I hit modify to escape out of this command. For the purposes of this exercise, I know that there was no column necessary at this location. I'm just going to click and delete that column. Next, let's add our walls to this perimeter. I'm going to come up to the architectural tab, click on my architectural wall, come down to my properties palette. We're using a generic 12 inch wall for the exterior. I'm going to click on that in my type selector. For my top constraint, I'm going to assign these walls up to roof. I'm going to click here on my location line and change it to finish face exterior. And I'm going to carefully trace the perimeter. of my layout. See how Revit is snapping to my columns. 
There we go. Now I'm going to repeat the process for our interior walls in this layout, but I do need to come back to my type selector and change this to a generic 6 inch wall. These interior walls, the top constraint is up to level 2. The perimeter walls are extending all the way to, all the way to roof. However, our interior walls are only up to level 2. So be careful to change that. I'm going to change my location line to finish face interior. And I'm going to begin to click and add my interior walls. I'm going to hit modify to end this command.